Hey guys, I'm Jackson. And I'm Tristan. And today we're going to show you how to make a buffer using acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. Okay guys, we're going to do um, our, the calculations in order to create 800 milliliters of uh, buffer solution. Okay, so we're going to start off with 800 milliliters of vinegar, which is 5% acetic acid by volume. So we're going to multiply 0.05 by 800 milliliters, which gives us 40 milliliters. So we know that there are going to be 40 milliliters of acetic acid in the vinegar. Now the density of acetic acid is 1.05 grams per milliliter, and we calculate that there are 42 grams of acetic acid in vinegar. Now to find out how much sodium hydroxide we're going to need to make this solution, we have to figure out first how many moles of acetic acid we've got. So, so the molar mass of acetic acid is going to be 60 grams per mole, and we're going to calculate that we have 0.7 moles of acetic acid. So we take the moles of our acid that we have currently, and we divide it by 2 to get um, 0.035 moles, and that's, what, that's how much um, conjugate base we want to have uh, for the buffer solution. So we need the molar mass of NaOH, 40 grams per mole. You then um, take the moles and the the moles of that um, the acid you want to react, and then multiply it by forty grams per mole of um, NaOH to get fourteen grams of NaOH. So when you have this many moles of sodium hydroxide, since it reacts with the uh, acetic acid in a one-to-one -one ratio, half of the acetic acid will react with all of the sodium hydroxide, which will yield 0.35 moles of acetate. So we'll have 0.35 moles of acetate and 0.35 moles of acetic acid. Now, according to the henderson hasselbach equation, when they're equal, that'll just give us the pH equals the pKa. And the pKa of acetic acid is about 4.75. Here we will be making our um, 400 milliliter solution, uh, buffer solution. We have our vinegar, which contains the acetic acid we'll need. We have our 7 grams of, um, of sodium hydroxide. Um, we're using 7 grams because we're making a 400 milliliter solution, so half of what we calculated on the board earlier and we have our magnetic, magnetic stirrer and our pH meter to make sure that we get um, to a pH of 4.75. Okay, so then we will add the um, seven grams of NaOH. Okay, so here we've got our buffer solution of acetic acid and the acetate ion, and our pH is around five, so that's a little high, but pH meters aren't always perfect, and we don't know the exact concentration of this vinegar, so there's bound to be a little bit of error. So now what we're gonna do is add some of this one molar hydrochloric acid, 100 milliliters, and see how it changes the pH of this solution, and compare that to how it changes Okay, so here I've got my 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, safety glasses, and some of this one molar hydrochloric acid. Now Jackson is going to measure out 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and then add it to the buffer solution to see the pH change. Okay, so the pH is now at 4.25, meaning that it dropped by about 0.75. So now let's take this water and put it on the stirrer. Okay, so the pH of the water is about is at 4.74, and 
which, and usually although water, the pH should be seven, what happens if there's even a tiny bit of contaminant in the water, then that can have an effect on the pH. So now we're gonna add these 100 milliliters to the water and see how the pH changes. Okay, so the pH of the water is now at 1.56. So it dropped by more than three on the pH scale, which is because there's no buffering going on in here and it's just straight hydrochloric acid. All right. So now we're gonna repeat the process, but this time we're gonna use sodium hydroxide, a strong base. Last time we added 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid to our solution, so this time we're gonna add 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide to our solution. And now we'll just let the stir do the work. All right, so after the sodium hydroxide dissolved in our buffer, we, we look at the pH meter and it says 5.75. So it went up about 0.65, um, showing that our buffer is quite effective. The pH of the water is at about 3.94. And now Tristan is gonna add the sodium hydroxide so we see what happens to it, or to the pH of the water. All right, now that the sodium hydroxide has completely dissolved in the water, we see that the pH is at 13.29. So it's gone up by a significant amount. So now you can see the difference between a buffer solution and a non-buffered solution.